What's up guys? Welcome to today's video. I hope you guys are all having a great week so far. So today's video is going to be explaining to you guys and analyzing a rental property. I'm basically going to be going through and talking about some points on what I look for for a rental property, basically just to make sure the deal is a good one. And if not, at what point do you need to buy the property to make it a good deal? So sit back, relax, enjoy the video. I'm actually going to be walking over to the whiteboard over here. It's the first time I'm using a whiteboard on this channel. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And before we get this video started, I really appreciate if you guys can drop a like on the video and let Let's do it. All right, guys. So this is the first time I'm using a whiteboard on this channel, so I hope it works out. So far, it looks good, but I basically broke down sections for you guys, and this is how I figure out and how I analyze a rental property. This is going to happen before you actually put an offer on the property to make sure that it's a good deal. Basically, at the end of the day, you want to figure out how much money you're going to make based on your investment that you're putting in. So for this example, we're actually going to use one of my properties because this is fairly easy for me because I, I, I know the numbers on this property, and I'll basically be able to break it down for you guys. So the property that I'm using is the property that I bought last year in July. The purchase price for this property is $210,000 and the down payment, I, down payment closing costs and rehab, basically how much money I put in, just about $48,000. Now these numbers will come into play later on. There's four different categories as you guys can see. There's an income category. There is a cash flow category, there's an expense category, and then there's a cash on cash return category. This is very important because a cash on cash return is basically the premise of this whole video and what we're trying to figure out. So I basically like to, I, I like to think of it as sections. You're basically going to go from income to expenses and then your cash flow is going to be based on those two boxes and then based on these three boxes you'll find your cash on cash return. So the income is a very simple straightforward approach. A lot of the times there's only one thing that goes into income and that is your monthly rent as a landlord, what your tenants are paying you to live there. Sometimes if you have bigger properties there's other expenses that like maybe you charge for laundry or other expenses like that but for me personally and to keep this video simple the only income I have on this property is from their rent I make or I'm taking in 18 I have a lot of room here so I'm gonna fill it out eighteen hundred and twenty five dollars a month so every single month for this property my bank account gets $1,825 as long as all my tenants pay on time, which they have for the last nine, 10 months, I think. So $1,825 my bank account gets every single month from my tenants. Now we're going to move into expenses. This is very, very important and oftentimes is underestimated and gets overlooked when you're trying to calculate a property. For me personally, I always like to exaggerate on these numbers. So then when the numbers actually do come in, it makes me feel even better. I see even a, I see even a better deal later on. But over exaggerating on these numbers, kind of gives you a little bit of a cushion when you actually close on the property and then you get your mortgage, you get your utilities and all that kind of stuff and you're like, oh wow, like I actually, I'm even making more money than I thought. That's always a, a good feeling as opposed to the opposite where you, where you kind of like have this number in your head and the next thing you know it's not even close to that and you're almost, you may even be in a negative cash flow. The last thing you want on a rental property as a landlord is negative cash flow. A lot of the times, for me personally, I don't think I'll ever go in on a rental property unless I'm positive cash flow. There's some areas, there's some cities, there's some states that landlords buy a property just based on appreciation, which we'll talk about later on. But for the sake of this video, it's going to be cash on cash return and how much you're making every single month and every single year based on your rental. So the biggest expense, a lot of you guys know, is going to be your mortgage payment. You're going to have a mortgage payment on the property unless you paid it, paid for it all cash. But the majority of the time, you're going to have a mortgage payment. Now you guys are going to see parentheses. I don't know if you can read that. It says PITI, which is basically your mortgage. It's principal, interest, taxes and insurance. You're going to have to have all these on every single property. There's no way that you're not going to get away with any of these four. Principal is how much you're paying down and how much equity you're putting into the house every single month. Interest is how much you're paying to the bank every single month. Not necessarily the bank, but whoever you're getting the loan from. That's how they make their money. Taxes, you obviously can't get away with without paying property taxes or you'll get foreclosed on or you'll get a tax sale on your property. And then the last thing is insurance, which you need insurance obviously on a property. So all this is usually bundled up. The lender will usually bundle all this up for you every single year, I believe. So this is all in like one bulk sum that comes out of your bank account every single month. For me, this number equals $994 a month by far my biggest expense. We're now going to move into utilities. This really depends on you as a landlord on what you charge. Sometimes you'll have to pay for landscape, which I have in miscellaneous. Sometimes you'll have the, the tenants take care of landscape. Sometimes there's an HOA fee, which I forgot to add in here because my property doesn't have an HOA. 
but HOA is something that gets overlooked quite a bit. So I'm gonna add HOA in right here even though I don't have an HOA. But you definitely wanna figure out how much your HOA is every single month because that will play a huge impact. There's some HOAs that are $100, $200 and that can eat into your entire cash flow if you overlook that. So make sure you know the HOA laws and you know the cost every single month for HOA before you buy a property. Utilities. Now for me, I only pay water and trash. I can't do either or. The water comes with the trash. The trash comes with the water. Once you get water at your property, you automatically have to pay for trash at that property. This equals out, the trash is uh, uh, consistent throughout the year. It's $27, $26 a month for trash for them to come and pick it up every single week. Uh, water bills for, my, for this specific house, it is anywhere from $60 to $65 a month. This is a pretty consistent one as well, so it's really nice to kind of get an idea on every single month how much I'm gonna make. Now obviously you can have, a lot of the landlords will have their tenants pay all utilities. This just really depends on the negotiation. I have students, so it's a little bit easier for me to raise the rent a little bit and fit that utility bill into my into my expense rather than have them try to split it between like three or four tenants because a lot of the times it will cause them to fight. So sometimes it's just easier to charge them more up front and just pay for some of the utilities. It really depends on the type of tenant you have. If you have a long-term tenant with a family, some a lot of the times you can get away with even them doing yard work and stuff like that because it's more of a home to them. So my utilities come out to about $80. Miscellaneous. This can be anywhere from like repairs, big CapEx expenses, like maybe you need a new AC unit. I always set aside about $100 a month just into my account. So if I do need to repair something, I'll have that extra $100 over like one to two year span, which can easily add up to like one, two, three thousand dollars. Now for me, this isn't a big deal because all my, all, my, all my monthly income from these properties sits in a bank account specifically for that property. So I don't like commingle my, my personal banking account with my housing banking account. So this doesn't really matter because all the money that I make from it is still in that account regardless. But this miscellaneous repair fee would be for someone that maybe pulls out a certain amount of money every single month from those properties and spends it. You definitely want a little bit of extra savings, but for me, it's all saved anyways. So now that we have all these expenses, we're gonna add them up into one like bundle because that's how much is coming out of your account after this comes into your account every single month. My water bills and stuff like that don't get taken out of my account until like two thirds of the month. So I actually end up with more money at the beginning of the month and then almost at the end of the month, that's when the utility bills comes out. But your mortgage is gonna get taken out or it should get taken out pretty much the same day that you're getting rent. So that'll kind of come out in the wash. We're now gonna get this expense, which is $1,174. And we're gonna find out what our monthly cash flow is. It's a very simple equation. You're basically gonna go rent minus your expenses, and that is your monthly income. So for this specific property, I am averaging about 600, which is true, about $650 a month. I don't know if you guys can see this up here. $650 a month cash flow. Now we wanna take this number, the 650 a month, and figure out what our annual income is. So it's a very simple equation as well. You're simply gonna times it by 12 because there's 12 months in a year. So you're gonna go 650 times 12, and that's gonna give us our yearly income on this property. And that is $7,800 a year that I'm making on this specific property, guys. Now, to figure out our cash on cash return, this is basically gonna figure out if this deal is a good one. You're gonna basically take that annual income and divide it by how much you invested in the property. A lot of the times, the overall investment can be like rehab costs right when you buy it. It can be your, it is your down payment, it's your closing costs all bundled into one. So we already figured that out down here, which was $48,000. So we're simply gonna plug in these numbers. $48,000 and seventy-eight. dollars now this is going to give us a percentage and that percentage is your cash on cash return percentage It's basically going to be how much money you're making a year based on how much money you put in so super quick math here 7,800 divided by 48,000 is 16.25 percent We're gonna write this in right here 16.25 we're even going to circle it because this is a very, very important number. 
16.25% is basically how much money you're making on your money. Now, is that a good deal or is, it, or is this property a good deal? Am I doing a good job on this investment? You kind of have to compare that number to something else. So a lot of times we're going to compare it to maybe the stock market, which I believe is like a, almost a 10% return averaged out annualized over like a 10, 20 year period. I think it was like, I think I did the calculations yesterday on a, a 10 year chart, which was about 9.5% annual return. So obviously this specific property is at 16 with the stock market annualized at like 9.5%. You have, you can have dividend stocks anywhere from 7%, one to 7%. It really depends. You can put this $48,000 into a bank account, a high yield interest savings bank account, which may pay you 1.5%. So 16.25% for me personally is a good deal because I'm just comparing it to other ways where I can put my money. You basically just want to figure out, can I put this $48,000 into another investment and make me more than 16.25%? If not, then this may be something you want to think about. Now you can use this calculation to figure out if a deal is a good one as well. Maybe this number is at like 5% and you want to get it up to 10%. Then you're going to have to negotiate what you bought the property for in order to make this all make or in order to make this property make sense for you as an investment. Another thing to note before I end this video is it's not just your monthly cash flow on these properties. Obviously, you buy a property and hope it appreciates over time. Generally, the real estate market will appreciate. So you're not only getting this cash flow every single year, and you're not only getting the 16.25% return, but you're also getting appreciation on your property for when you sell it. So you wanna keep that in mind as well. It did, the appreciation on your property may not show up in the 16.25%, but over time, you generally will make money on your property. So I hope this helped you guys out. If you guys have any questions, comment down below. I'd love to help you guys. If you guys have any video suggestions, comment down below as well if you guys could drop a like on the video I really really do appreciate it I believe we just broke 400 subscribers so I want to thank each and every one of you guys for that and message me on Instagram shoot me an email if you guys have any questions I'll see you soon